side note, let me know if you recognize that last tune. Anyway, today I am going to be playing and showing you the contrabass flute, which is this amazing instrument right here. It is one of the lowest in the flute family. Traditionally, you kind of have piccolo and C flute, traditional flute, if you will. And then there's also alto and bass flute. Those are the most common flutes that are ever played. Then this is next. There are also much larger, lower instruments than this, but this one is still incredibly rare. And I'm just so excited that I was able to get my hands on one of these and play it and show it to you guys in this video. Before I get started, if you are looking for a new instrument, maybe it's a contrabass flute, maybe it's a piccolo, whatever it may be, you can go to the Flute Center of New York's website and use my code GINA and you'll get free shipping, an extended trial, as well as an extended warranty. You'll get 10% off of sheet music. And if you are looking to sell one of your instruments and you have any repairs that need to be done on that, you'll get $25 off of that. And if you wanna learn more about that, watch this video right here. Now let's talk about how the contrabass fits into the flute family. So you have your, whatever, traditional C flute, and that goes typically to a low C, maybe a low B if you have a low B foot joint, but let's just say it goes to a low C, that is middle C. Now you then have a bass flute, which goes an octave below that, so that can hit a low C below middle C, and then the contra can go an entire octave lower than that. So it goes two octaves lower than the traditional C flute, which is really incredible. And I, I didn't know what quite to expect with this instrument when I first got it. And I will say, as soon as the box arrived, I was like, I have to open it up. Usually I will try it for the first time here on camera with you guys to give you my first thoughts. But I'm not gonna lie, I was so excited. I couldn't help myself and I started playing it already. And it's a really cool instrument. Initially, I was thinking, I was like, oh, this instrument would be good for um, sustained notes or maybe effects, you know, kind of texture kind of things. I didn't think it could actually handle more melodic phrases and things like that, and this definitely can. Uh, one thing I will say is there's not a lot of makers for contrabass flutes. Um, this one in particular is from Kingma. They, they're kind of known for making low flutes and doing them incredibly well. This is definitely the case with this instrument. It's, I'm, I'm really surprised. I've actually had a harder time playing some bass flutes than I did this instrument. It's just really well constructed. So definitely props to them. I'm incredibly impressed. And yeah, it's just, it's so much fun to play. Um, the way that you play it, by the way, is very different than flute. Flute, you're usually just holding it, right? This actually has a stand and it's adjustable depending on your height, which is great. And you can either play it standing up. You can also sit on a stool similar to the ones that bass players sometimes use. You could sit on one of those. So just whatever is comfortable for you. And another thing that's interesting is it does come with a stand, which is really helpful because uh, unlike flute, it's a lot easier to put them down on just like a little peg and, and then walk away or whatever. This, not so much. So thankfully it does come with a stand. So let's talk about the rarity of this instrument because this is not something that you see every single day. So in, in LA, you know, there's a lot of flute players in LA. I do know a lot of flute players that do own alto flutes and bass flutes. Now, I only know of two contras in all of Los Angeles, all of Los Angeles. So that tells you how rare this is. And typically shops won't have more than one of these available at a time. Usually it just kind of depends. I, the last I looked at Flu Center, they might've had this and one other, I could be wrong, but it's something for you to look at. It's definitely something like if you're looking at one of these, you might have to look at the website. You might have to call and make a special order for these. Um, so just be aware of that. These are not just super accessible and, and they don't, they just don't make as many of these. And uh, I wish they made more because honestly, it's just so much, so much fun to play. Typically where you're going to see these is in a lot of like flute choirs. That's the, the most I've ever seen them is either there or at some kind of convention. So I would highly suggest that if you're at some kind of flute convention, whether it's the NFA convention that they hold yearly or one of the more regional conventions, a lot of times they will bring one of these and will allow you to try it. So I would highly suggest 
go try them because they're so much fun. Another thing to be aware of is that it requires a lot more air. And secondly, the embouchure has to be incredibly loose. I have obviously played a lot of alto and bass flute, so I kind of knew more what to expect. But if you were going from flute to playing one of these, you would have to really, really relax your embouchure so, so, so much. Let me just try playing it with my flute embouchure and see if that would even work. Yeah, it doesn't really work. So what you have to do is just really, really relax your embouchure. I would not re recommend this for people who are just kind of like starting flute because you're working so much on establishing your embouchure and getting really comfortable with that. So don't play one of these until you're just a little bit more seasoned. If, if it's just for fun, you know, like at a convention, fine, try it. But you wouldn't want to play on this a lot if you're just kind of starting out on flute because that would hurt your embouchure. Same thing with any of the other flutes, to be honest, with piccolo, alto flute, bass flute, get really established on flute before moving on to any of the other ones. But this, like I said, is just much more similar to an embouchure that you would have for alto or bass flute, just very relaxed and open. If you really, if you pinch or you're, you have a smaller embouchure like you would for a flute, it's just not gonna, you're not gonna be able to get those notes out. <laughs> Such a cool sound. This Kingma contrabass is silver plated and is tuned to A equals 442. It has a B foot joint and comes with a custom made flight case. One great thing about this case is that it holds each piece individually. And I'm not saying to do this, please don't actually try this, but theoretically you should be able to have the case upside down and it should hold all your pieces. Again, I'm not saying to do that, but theoretically that should work. So it is a very safe case for your instrument. Another thing that it comes with is a carbon fiber stand, which is very convenient because you're able to put your flute there while you're not playing it. This right here is the case that it comes with. You can see it right here and it's really comfortable. I don't have the instrument in it right now, but I have tried it. It's actually not that heavy in this case. It was really, really well made and it has really cushioned straps right here to hold your instrument. Let me show you the length of this. So this is how long it is. It's actually not that big for that instrument. I was actually really surprised, but it's a really nice and well-made case. I'm going to play the bass lute so that you can hear the comparison of the two instruments. So this will be the very low register of this instrument. <laughs> actually goes to a low B, which is really surprising. I didn't know that they could actually go to a low B. Um, but so that's really cool and it's just really easy to play. The maker at Kingman did such a great job like cutting this head joint. Like I'm able to get the air in very well and focus the air. And what's interesting is even the low register, it's just it's so easy. I've, I've said this so many times already, but it's just very easy to play. I was not expecting that. And you can actually push a lot and get kind of like a, I don't know, gritty sound or something. I don't know what you'd call it. Just like this more metallic sound. It's really cool. It just has such a great sound. So let me play a little bit more for you so that you can hear what this instrument really sounds like. So that is the second register D. We've gone two octaves. And that is a high A. Whew, I have to catch my breath after that. It takes so much air. Think about it, like it's going in this tubing. And I, I didn't show you this actually. Let me show you how big this actually is. Can you believe that? That's insane. One thing I also wanted to talk to you about is how you put this instrument together. So first of all, <laughs> regular flute has three pieces. This has five and you also have the peg on the bottom that's adjustable. Uh, so we have this part right here 
then there's this section to here, and then you have this section that goes to here. Can we see it on camera? Yep, okay, here. And then we have this section that stops here and then the rest of it, which is really big. Okay, so how do you put it together? How do you know how to put it together? Thankfully, the maker actually has instructions for you and then also did something that was really nice. So there's actually numbers right here. This is five, four, three. So every single part has that. You can obviously take those off once you kind of know how to put the instrument together, but that is really helpful, <laughs> at least starting out for me. It was really nice to have that because then I actually knew how to put it together. So that's how you put this thing together. And it's, it's just, it's beautiful. Like it's insane that it's this well made, sounds this good. I, I'm just, I'm really surprised. I didn't think it would be able to play this well. Um, another thing to note is it doesn't have trill keys. Uh, I do believe I read on the website that the, the maker is working on adding trill keys to that. So just keep that in mind. There are certain trills you wouldn't be able to do. Uh, I mean, trills on this, I mean, they're possible. But there's a lot of key noise, just like on bass loot, it would be just because the keys are so big and there's so much surface area that's hitting when you're playing. So, you know, that's that. But it's, it's just really brilliantly made. I love this. I'm actually, <laughs> in some ways, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have requested to do this video with Flute Center because now I really want one of these and I have other things on my list of instruments to get next. Um, so now this is added to the list. Uh, it is a really, really awesome instrument though. I'm, I'm just so impressed and Kingman did such a great job creating this, making it, making that low register actually work and the high register actually work. It's so cool. Now I'm gonna play the low register and I'm gonna just see how much I can actually push. I'm surprised, like I'm actually able to put so much air into the instrument and like really, really push and it's not cracking. I'm, I'm shocked because like I said, like playing some bass flutes, I've not experienced that. for watching let me know what you thought about this and if you've ever tried a contrabass flute before thank you so much to the flute center for sending me out this gorgeous instrument it's been so much fun to learn how to play and also for making this series possible make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos about flute anything everything flute related and also follow me on facebook and instagram and i'll see you next time